our project is the implementation of a 3D rotational scanner. So our goal is to make a very cheap and accurate rotational scanner for people to use with 3D printers. So the way it works is we use a laser and a camera. The laser shines light onto the object. The camera takes a picture, processes the laser light, and with that, we can map it into a 3D point. When the points are mapped together, we get the object. Sure. So the concept of our project is the expansion of device interfaces through augmented and phenomenal augmented reality. Now imagine you can, you know, just grab that song and like you literally grab it with your hand and it, you grab this virtual object and you throw it onto your smart TV and then all of a sudden the song is playing on your sound system. Or even better, let's say you need to head out. You can just grab the currently playing song from the TV and you know just throw it on your phone and you know walk out the door. I'm a part of the Insight team and we decided that we wanted to solve a problem that uh, partially sighted users encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So we realized that within the grocery store and grocery shopping as a whole, it's a very visual medium. All of the information is communicated visually to uh, people who are trying to shop. So as a partially sighted person, this is a little bit of an obstacle. So we designed a system that allows you to interact with products and gain information that would be useful to make a good informed purchasing decision uh, through a non-visual medium. We, our solution uses uh, NFC, near field communication, which is a technology that we use in uh, tap to pay, for example, with our credit cards. Uh, the way we designed it is that there's a smartphone application that picks up product information and relays it to the user using text to speech, so audibly reads out the information to the user and allows them to get all the information that they need. And our project is a navigation aid for the visually impaired, uh, short form Navi. Uh, we found motivation to develop a device for the, for the visually impaired uh, as 500,000 Canadians currently suffer from some form of uh, vision loss. The two most common uh, aids for the visually impaired are the white cane and the guide dog. Uh, the current most popular aid, the white cane, has serious shortcomings as it can get stuck under tables and it doesn't quite detect obstacles in the head and chest area. Um, so essentially with Navi we wanted to extend on the shortcomings of the white cane. Um, this design, we call it Navi, um, and it's a handheld device um, that you can actually hold in your hand. And it uses, it has three different functional components uh, that we've broken it up to. The acquire section over here, the uh, processing section with the Raspberry Pi, and then finally our indicate section. Okay, hi. So today we decided to solve the issue of indoor locationing. Um, so when you are outside, you have GPS, and it actually locates you very well. You know where you are. As soon as you walk into the building, there are steel beams, there's concrete, and the reflections make it impossible to know where you are inside. GPS doesn't work indoors. So what we created is an application, an infrastructuralist application, that allows you to track in yourself inside of a building. And by combining dead reckoning and Wi-Fi fingerprinting, they have two very different sources of error. So we can actually try and balance each other out, themselves out, and reduce the overall error. So the bigger picture of our project is we are trying to facilitate the deployment of microgrids. So let's say right now you, are a, you want to have solar panels on your home and you want a grid connect, right? So we have a problem right now. There's no way the person who's managing the grid can control the power outputs of your home. So we are trying to give that interface to the utility to control, the, control directly the power outputs. So what we've implemented over here is our converter system. We're doing a demo of maximum power point tracking. So over here you can see we have our two different converter systems. This is a boost converter flowing this way and then a buck converter flowing backwards. And our algorithm has determined that between these two operating points is where we will see our maximum power. Our project goal aims to um, help the user to assemble the furniture in a more efficient and accurate manner. And basically we use um, there's two major parts that we uh, use for the project. The first is how we detect the furniture pieces. Uh, for this module we use the library called AR Toolkit. And for this toolkit we have the marker uh, stack. So we have this marker uh, stick on our furniture and our application uh, can detect this marker and then uh, show um, the actual uh, correct pieces for 
the furniture. And then once the user uh, sees the furniture is highlighted in the screen, uh, they can follow the instruction and then, for example, press N and then see the next instruction regarding what they need to do for the next move. Our project name is Fresh Bites, and the motivation for this project is that we came up with this project ourselves, um, with this um, uh, project ourselves, and we were students, and we wanted food in large quantities. We wanted food that's delicious, right? And we didn't want to pay so much for this food, right? So in Toronto, you, you use apps like Just Eat, you use apps like Uber Eat, you get one meal, $13, you know? It's pretty expensive. If you're a student living on loans, you, you, you can't afford that every, like, you know, three meals a day. We wanted home catering for students. So that is our motivation to create Fresh Bites. So what we did is we created this app. It's an app for students to purchase food. And if you view the food, you could view how many servings and the description of the food. View the ratings of the food for the, for the, for the students so they can see if they want to buy it from this home cook, right? So what you do, you can personalize your order so, like, less spicy. Our project is a home monitoring system for epileptic patients. Um, epilepsy is a neural chronic disorder that's characterized by unexpected seizures in patients and the leading cause of death in epileptic patients is a syndrome known as sudden and unexpected death of epileptic patients. Um, in short, it's known as SUDEP. And our goal of the project is to develop a system that can accurately detect seizures from recorded um, EEG signals from epileptic patients as well as notify the caregiver through an alarm system at the occurrence of a seizure. Oh, we are simulating a real life situation where uh, the intracranial uh, headband would be uh, put on a patient and we would be reading their signals live and sending it to the home monitoring system which is a machine learning algorithm which would detect if a seizure is occurring or not. After uh, detecting that a seizure, it would send a push notification to the mobile phone right away. So our project is called the Converging Robotic Swarm. Um, essentially what we have is four robots that we've built um, and an arena that we've built and we have these robots uh, converge, find themselves uh, autonomously uh, so they don't have any communication between each other. Uh, they use a control algorithm which um, finds a common consensus point basically. Um, you'll see these guys in the arena um, bounded by a boundary um, and also a camera over top of them. So what happens is there's a camera and it takes a picture of what's going on behind, uh, underneath it and it uses that to figure out what the robots can see. Um, and then it communicates this data to each of the robots. Um, and then the robots use this control algorithm to figure out where they need to move. And they meet at a point all together, all four of them. Uh, my project's name is the Intelligent Gear Shifting System. Um, basically, it replaces the current system in the car, which is a very simple mechanical gear changing system. Uh, the car is a manual car. And our car basically changes it to an automatic paddle shifting system. So basically, once you sit down into the driver's seat, you're going to see a driver's interface in front of you. And it has some LEDs which will show you when you should shift up, when you should shift down, your current gear, the vehicle RPM. And you also have the steering wheel, which has the paddle shifts. And basically, you just pretend like you're in a real car. You start racing, and whenever the system tells you to upshift, you press the paddle to upshift, and when it tells you to downshift, you press the paddle to downshift. 